I have always dreamt of creating a life of freedom. One that would allow me to see the world, explore new places, and live anywhere that I wanted to. I obsessed over this idea because there were days when I truly thought I was going to spend my entire life stuck in an office building, seeing and doing the same things every day. Waiting until retirement, when I'd already be too old and too tired to travel and see what the world has to offer. Those moments terrified me, but they're what started my journey of creating a life that was the exact opposite. That's why I'm sitting on the floor of my empty apartment because I made that dream a reality and I want to show you how to do the same. A couple of months ago, my girlfriend and I sold 90% of our belongings, booked a short-term rental across the country in an apartment we had never even seen before and packed our lives and our cat into one car and drove across the country and never looked back. Now I switch locations every few months to explore new cities, to snowboard or surf, or just because I want to. Today, I want to show you the actual logistics of how we were able to completely up uproot our lives and travel the world. And the first step is minimalism. To be a minimalist is to make the active choice to surround yourself only with things that add value to your life. Most people have a problem with buying and keeping a bunch of random shit that they don't need. And most people don't get to travel the world and experience true freedom. Coincidence? No. <laughs> if you want to achieve true location freedom, minimalism needs to become a part of your life. I guarantee if you wanted to move across the country tomorrow, your first question would be, what do I do with all this? stuff. To live like this, there's a fundamental mindset that you need to adopt. You need to flip the switch and start valuing experiences over possessions. Do you own your stuff or does it own you? Because if you can't control your location, your stuff might have more control over your life than you do. Freedom is the goal. Freedom from unnecessary baggage, both literally and figuratively. And minimalism helps with both. So how do you decide what to keep? This is something I really struggled with when we made the jump into this lifestyle. And to help, I devised a challenge. The challenge is, I can only take what fits into this Volkswagen Tiguan. No exceptions. And everything that doesn't fit in the car has to go through what I call the funnel of death. It's not nearly that dramatic, I just thought it sounded pretty cool. So, the funnel of death. If an item is valuable and can help fund moving expenses, sell it. Next, if the item isn't valuable, but someone else could still use it, then donate it. The third ring is stuff you should have gotten rid of months ago. Throw it away. And at the bottom of the funnel of death is leave it behind. This is an emergency step if you fail the challenge, and it's usually the hardest part because this is stuff that you probably didn't want to throw away to begin with, but you can't bring with you. And we kind of succeeded at this challenge, but I still did have to buy a rooftop cargo bag for some extra clothes and kitchen stuff. But I'm counting this as a win. We had gone from having a two bedroom apartment full of stuff to driving across the country with everything we own packed in one car. But that being said, Minimalism doesn't come without sacrifice. The first time you try and part way with your material possessions, especially ones that you've had for a long time, it can really sting. I sold one of the first guitars I ever owned because I knew traveling with multiple just wasn't practical. And even as a veteran minimalist myself, it took me weeks to even feel okay with the idea of selling it. But looking back, I haven't regretted it once. It helped me pay for the moving expenses that enabled some of the most amazing experiences of my life. And the person I sold it to could seriously shred, so it's definitely still getting some love. Life is full of trade-offs, but I have never regretted trading in material possessions for amazing experiences or deeper connections with people. Remind yourself that what you're after is a rich life full of amazing experiences, not more items, taking up space in your closet, collecting dust, and stopping you from exploring the world. Now, minimalism is super important for being able to comfortably travel like this, but it's not going to pay your bills. And that brings us to the second pillar of how I'm able to live like this and jump from city to city without going broke. And that is location independent income stream. There are three main paths that allow you to create a location independent income so you can work from anywhere in the world. Remote work, freelancing, and running an online business. Fully remote roles are easier to come by than at any point in history, and this is actually the route that I took to securing my location-independent lifestyle. As you might know from watching my other videos, I learned to code specifically so I could find a remote job that allowed me to travel. I spent years learning Python, SQL, and data engineering because I knew the tech industry was really friendly to nomads like myself. But not everyone's idea of freedom involves working for a company, which brings us to freelancing. Rather than being stuck in one company as a full-time remote worker, you could take on a diverse portfolio of projects as a freelancer. Getting set up as a freelancer can be a challenge, but it can be worth By ditching it. the nine to five, you gain unmatched flexibility, allowing you to set your own hours and set a price that mirrors your worth. And make sure to check out my list of the top 20 platforms for remote roles and freelancing gigs if this is something you want to do yourself. Now I get it, working for someone isn't for everyone. And lucky for you, the digital age has made it easier than ever to start your own online business so you can separate your income from your location. A few examples of online businesses are digital products like eBooks, templates, and courses, newsletters, 
that can collect sponsorships, ads, and paid subscribers, membership sites that charge people a fee for monthly access, e-commerce stores to sell your very own products online, and content creation so you can create an audience to monetize. To learn more about how to create location-independent income streams, check out my video on how to become a digital nomad. It's easy to get caught up in the excitement of moving to your dream location, but living this lifestyle requires careful planning, or you'll burn out along with your bank account. You can avoid this by creating your very own nomad travel plan. I'll walk you through how to create one and show you mine. The first step is to list out all the places you want to live and for how long. Currently, I'm moving locations every four months, mainly to follow the seasons. I'm in Long Beach right now because summer in California is unmatched, but once the winter hits, I'm moving up to Reno where I'll be minutes from a ski resort. Planning out your locations like this allows you to experience the best time of year in each of these places or a time that works for you while making sure you don't get stuck in a place in a season you don't like or having to just move back and forth across the country multiple times per year. The second step is to list all of the places you want to visit in the country that you're living in. Part of living in different places throughout the year means some of the coolest places in the country get a lot closer to you. Listing out all the cool places you want to visit in the country you're in will allow you to start splicing in day or weekend trips into your yearly plans. This allows you to take advantage of the places that you're in and really see everything the place has to offer. Step three is to list all the places you want to travel outside of the country you're in. This applies more to people in an area where you can easily travel to and from other countries, but even if you can't, it's still helpful to figure out where you would like to go so you can start planning for these big trips. And step four is putting it all together. Once you have your lists, you can start making a plan based on the amount of time you're in each of these locations and start sprinkling in other trips if that's feasible. As a nomad, you'll probably have family and friends all over the place, and so having a list like this is really helpful for letting them know where you'll be so you can plan holidays or even short-term rentals. There's a link in the description to a Notion template that will walk you through how to create your own. People are less shocked to hear that I sold all of my things to travel the world than they are that I moved into a new apartment without seeing it in person. Yeah, it's a little risky, but with the advent of 3D apartment tours, video walkthroughs, and just plain old pictures, it's simpler and safer than you'd think to move across the country into an apartment you've never seen in person. To find a new apartment, I usually start by scouring the entire location that I'm thinking about moving on Google Maps. How far away is the nearest grocery store? Do I need a car to live here? Is this place safe to live? Am I able to get my pumpkin cream cold brew without driving 45 minutes? There are a million questions you could answer just by doing a detailed look into the place you're hoping to move. So that's always step one. Then it's time to bounce from apartments.com to apartment finder to Zillow and back again. Make a list of apartments that match your criteria, but don't stop there. These third-party platforms can leave out valuable information like rent specials, discounts, or short-term housing options that completely change what apartments are actually available to you. For each apartment you like, add it to the list and then email the leasing office with your price range, your move-in date, and asking if there are any specials or hidden fees. After stripping down your possessions to the bare bone essentials, securing a location-independent income, defining a nomad travel plan, and finding your new home, you're ready to make the leap. The idea of selling everything to travel might seem daunting or even kind of terrifying to some. The fear of letting go, the uncertainty about the future, and even having to reconstitute what the word home means to you are parts of this journey that often go overlooked. But the rewards are endless. While this life isn't for everyone, it's one that teaches you to cherish experiences over objects, relationships over routines, and freedom over comfort. When you're looking back on your life, it won't be on the objects that you own. It'll be on the places you've been, the experiences you've had, and the people you've connected with. If you enjoyed this video, you should watch this one next, and hit the like and subscribe button, and follow me on Twitter for more updates. Thanks so much for watching. Safe travels.